Good afternoon. My name is Nicole and I will be your conference operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to the Mercury General third quarter conference call. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question during this time, simply press star and the number one on your telephone keypad. If you would like to withdraw your question, press the pound key. This conference call may contain comments and forward-looking statements based on current plans, expectations, events, and financial and industry trends, which may affect Mercury General's future operating results and financial position. Such statements involve risk and uncertainties which cannot be predicted or quantified and which may cause future activities and results of operations to differ materially from those discussed here today. I would now like to turn the call over to Mr. Gabriel Terrador. Sir, please go ahead. Thank you very much. I would like to welcome everyone to Mercury's fourth quarter conference call. I'm Gabe Terador, President and CEO. In the room with me is Mr. George Joseph, Chairman, Ted Stolick, Senior Vice President and CFO, Jeff Schrader, Vice President and Chief Product Officer, and Chris Graves, Vice President and Chief Investment Officer. Before we take questions, we will make a few comments regarding the quarter. Our fourth quarter operating earnings were 21 cents per share compared to an operating loss of 26 cents per share in the fourth quarter of 2018. The improvement in operating earnings was primarily due to an increase in previously unrecognized income tax benefits, a reduction in the combined ratio, and an increase in after-tax investment income. Included in the fourth quarter of 2019 results was a 10 cents per share tax benefit related to the recognition of previously unrecognized federal tax benefits and a reduction in state tax accruals related to a California franchise tax audit. Included in the fourth quarter of 2018 results was a seven cents per share tax benefit from the reversal of an IRS rule related to sequestration adjustments from the 2017 Tax Act. The combined ratio was 103.2% in the fourth quarter of 2019 compared to 106.7% in the fourth quarter of 2018. The improvement in the combined ratio was primarily due to $1 million of positive reserve development in the quarter compared to $23 million of adverse reserve development in the fourth quarter of 2018. In addition, catastrophe losses of $36 million in the quarter were lower than the $43 million of catastrophe losses in the fourth quarter of 2018. Excluding the impact of catastrophe losses, prior accident year reserve development, and seeded reinstatement premiums earned, the combined ratio was 99.3% in the quarter and 97.3% for the 12-month period ended December 31, 2019, compared to 98.6% and 95.6% for the quarter and 12-month period ended December 31, 2018. Our California private passenger auto combined ratio was approximately 97.9% .9 in the fourth quarter of 2019, compared to 103.2% in the fourth quarter of 2018. The improvement in the California private passenger auto combined ratio was primarily due to rate increases taken during 2019 and to $10 million of favorable prior accident year reserve redundancies in the quarter compared to $14 million of adverse prior accident year reserve development in the fourth quarter of 2018. Partially offsetting the improvement in the combined ratio from reserve development and rate increases was an increase in frequency and severity. California private passenger auto frequency increased by about 2% in the quarter as compared to the fourth quarter of 2018, primarily from the bodily injury coverage, and severity increased by 5% in the quarter as compared to the fourth quarter of 2018. A 5% personal auto rate increase for California automobile insurance companies pending approval with the California Department of Insurance and a 4% personal auto rate increase was recently filed for Mercury Insurance Company. Collectively, these represent two-thirds of company-wide direct premiums earned. Our California homeowners combined ratio was 123% in the fourth quarter of 2019 compared to 125% in the fourth quarter of 2018. Catastrophe losses in our homeowners line, primarily from California wildfires, 
were $34 million in a quarter compared to $38 million in, in the fourth quarter of 2018. A 6.99% rate increase in our California homeowners line was approved by the California Department of Insurance and was implemented in August 2019. In addition, a 6.99% rate increase in our California homeowners line is pending approval with the California Department of Insurance. California homeowners premiums represent about 13% of direct company-wide premiums earned. For states outside of California, we posted a personal lines, homeowner, and auto combined ratio of approximately 110% in the fourth quarter of 2019 compared to 101% in the fourth quarter of 2018. Those results include approximately $2 million of unfavorable prior year reserve development on $103 million of earned premium compared to no development on $104 million of earned premium in the fourth quarter of 2018. Our year-to-date accident year personal lines combined ratio for states outside of California was 103% in 2019 compared to 97% in 2018. Increases in severity in several states in private passenger auto were the primary reason for the increase in the combined ratio in 2019. We have been increasing our private passenger auto rates in many states outside of California to improve results. We have also introduced improved segmentation with an updated product we have named Mercury Advantage. Mercury Advantage has increased production in the states where it, where it has been deployed, and to date, the loss experience has been favorable. Mercury Advantage is scheduled to be released to all but one of our states outside of California by the end of 2020. Our homeowners results outside of California saw double-digit premium growth in 2019 with favorable underwriting results in total and on an underlying basis. The expense ratio was 23.5% in the fourth quarter compared to 23.3% in the fourth quarter of 2018 the slightly higher expense ratio was primarily due to an increase in profitability-related accruals partially offset by lower acquisition costs. Premiums written, excluding reinsurance reinstatement premiums written, grew 3% in the quarter, primarily due to higher average premiums per policy and an increase in homeowners' policies written. With that brief background, we will now take questions. At this time, if you would like to ask an audio question, you may do so by pressing star and the number one on your telephone keypad. Again, that is star one. We'll pause for just a moment. The first question will come from the line of Greg Peters with Raymond James. Uh, good morning. Thanks for the call. A uh, couple of questions for you on your results. Um, first of all, I was listening with interest about your commentary about the results um, outside of California, and with a uh, combined ratio that appear, it seems to be deteriorating on a year-over-year -year basis for auto and home, do you have an objective or do you have a time frame in mind of when you might be able to get that auto-home uh, combined ratio outside of California down to below 100? Well, Greg, it's a good question. As I mentioned earlier, you know, our, our 2018 action year results uh, for personal auto, as an example, were in the 97.8, I think is what we posted in, in outside of California. And our uh, homeowners was uh, 93.2 in 19 and a 94.6 in 18. So 18 actually was a, a decent year for our results outside of California. What we saw in 19 was just increases in severity that really offset any kind of rate increases that were you know built in into our rate. So severity increased much much higher than we expected. Uh, driven by you know uh, Florida as an example had some issues with PIP in Florida, um, and our other large state Texas also saw some increases in severity. So. Uh, we were pretty much there in 18. We, we had some unexpected, I think, uh, developments with respect to severity in 2019 uh, that we didn't anticipate, uh, but we are taking action. Uh, as I mentioned uh, in our prepared remarks, we have uh, taken rate. Uh, in addition to that, we've introduced uh, what we believe is a, is a much better segmented uh, product in, in most of the states, that, which is going to be rolling out for uh, the rest of 2020. 
And so both Florida and Texas are more of a file and use state, uh, a regulatory framework, correct, as it relates to rate? Or I guess Florida, is it homeowners that you're getting, you need prior approval on? Well, we don't write homeowners in Florida. Uh, so in, 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 in Florida, you can, you can file and use. And same with Texas, correct? Yes. So theoretically, this should be a pretty, you know, the fix shouldn't take very long because you're able to go after the rate you need to get, restore profitability. Is that a fair assumption? Well, I mean, it takes a little while because if you have six-month policies, it, it takes a little bit, of, you know, to earn in. Yeah. Uh, so there's some so there's some rate earning in, but generally speaking, uh, you know, I would agree with that statement. If, if, if we file for enough rate, uh, you know, to offset the increases in severity, that you know, we should see improved results. And, and we did that, you know, back in in 2018, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Right. Right. Thank you for the color. You know, one of the surprises last year, well, I guess it wasn't a surprise, but um, was a change, was how your reinsurance changed and your retention per event, especially as it relates to, like, property losses, fires, catastrophes, was higher. And um, given the experience you had in 2019, can you give us a preview on how you think your reinsurance structure might change in 2020 and how we should think about your catastrophe exposure by a, a per event basis? Sure, I'll have Ted answer that. Yeah, so, so on the current treaty, which goes from July 1 to June 30, um, so we're behind the worst of the fire season. Uh, there were no reinsured losses that hit that, that treaty. So we're expecting the pricing um, come this next July to be pretty rational um, when we go up for renewal. Um, as far as changing limits or retention at the renewal, um, a lot of that will depend on our risk tolerances and the pricing available in the market, also the capacity in the market. Um, but uh, as of now, we, we expect the renewal limits and retention to look similar to what we currently have. And again, we'll probably know a lot more in the spring once we uh, finish our, um, our uh, PML analysis and get those updated and then go start marketing the reinsurance. But you, 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 you said that there were no reinsured losses related to fire so far. I, obviously, the fire season is largely over with, but so far on the, 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 uh, on the last, on this current reinsurance treaty year, correct? That's correct. Our retention was $40 million and, yeah. and none of the fires were large enough to get, get into that. Um, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for those answers. And then um, I guess the final question would be just on the California business. Um, you know, it, it, it feels like you're – it feels like you should be getting rate that exceeds your loss cost trend, but – I guess we're just not seeing the improvement show up in your bottom line results. What do you, do you have a view right now of how your rate compares to loss trend? Do you think, you know, you talk about these 5% rate increases, the uh, filed 6.9%, et cetera. How, how, how do you feel about where you are sort of in that rate cycle relative to the results? Well, you know, I think I mentioned in the prior call last quarter, you know, we do indications every quarter. Um, and, uh, you know, right now with these latest two uh, rate increases that we have applied for and that are pending, we feel pretty good about where we would be, both in MIC and Cal Auto. When you take a look at our California Private Passenger Auto results, you know, we booked about a 97% uh, combined ratio for the entire year. And uh, there was a lot of rate that was not earned in that 97%. So um, on an on-level basis, it, it's better than the 97%. So uh, in addition, with these rate findings that uh, hopefully will get approved in 2020, uh, we actually feel pretty good where we're at right now. What do you... And when you look at the 2019 results, what do you think the combined ratio will look like for the homeowners only portion of your business in California? 
how much was it uh, in 19, or how much, what do we expect? What, 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 I mean, well, I, what, it's a historical number. So just what, what was just homeowners California? It was, a, what, it was 106, 106% combined. And how did that compare with 2018? 2018, the accident year for 2018 was 103, and the calendar year um, was like a 102. And the 106 that you gave is a calendar year, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your answers. Sure. And again, to ask an audio question, please press star 1. We show no further audio questions at this time. Okay. Well, that was a short call this quarter. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us, and uh, we'll talk to you again next quarter. Thank you very much. This does conclude today's conference call. We thank you for your participation and ask that you please disconnect your line.